Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. When it comes to renewable energy, solar power may get most of the media attention, but there's another energy source that is just as promising and exciting. And that's wind power, or what I like to refer to as secondhand solar power. You see, the wind is primarily driven by changes in air pressure caused by sunlight. And the global annual potential of onshore and offshore wind power is around 840,000 terawatt hours. That's almost 40 times the world's annual power consumption. And like solar power, the adoption of wind power is growing fast and the cost has dropped substantially over the years. The global power capacity has more than doubled since 2012 from around 280 gigawatts to over 650 gigawatts today. A 650 gigawatt power capacity generates enough electricity to power the United States and India combined. And along with the growth in capacity, the wind turbines themselves have grown over the years. The average diameter of commercial turbine rotors was around 17 meters in the 1980s and generated around 0.07 megawatts. Today, the average rotor is over 116 meters and generates over 2.4 megawatts. And these massive turbines used today are made possible by the advancement of material science, allowing the giant blades and shafts to withstand a tremendous amount of stress. And these larger turbines have led to a substantial drop in costs over the past 40 years. The cost of wind power was 38 cents per kilowatt hour in 1980. Today, it's less than 2 cents. Alright, so how do these incredible devices work? Wind turbines are like plane propellers, but in reverse. Instead of an engine powering propellers to generate a wind force, the wind blows through the rotors and powers the engine. This boils down to the Bernoulli principle. You see, the shape of the blade causes air to take a longer path around one side compared to the other. And this creates a difference in air pressure, causing the blade to pull towards the low pressure side, which spins the rotor. And then inside the turbine housing lies coils of wire that spin inside a magnetic field, generating an electric current. So the downside of wind power is that only certain parts of the world have consistent wind at the ideal speed, which is between 21 and 26 kilometers per hour. And this map here highlights the areas that contain ideal wind speeds. The areas in yellow, orange, and red are great places for wind turbines. However, this map doesn't cover the shorelines where the winds are much more constant than on land. This is why offshore wind power is the fastest growing sector in wind power led by the UK and Germany. The UK has the three largest offshore wind farms in the world, the largest at the moment being the Hornsea Farm. Hornsea has a massive 1.2 gigawatt capacity and is located 120 kilometers off England's Yorkshire coast and will produce enough energy to power 1 million homes. The farm has 174 turbines, each standing 100 meters tall, and each turbine can power the average home for an entire day with just a single rotation. And if you think that's impressive, General Electric has developed a wind turbine that makes the ones on Hornsea Farm look like children. Enter the Heliod X wind turbine. The Heliod X is gargantuan, standing 260 meters tall, equipped with 107 meter long blades. With a 12 megawatt capacity, a single Heliod turbine can power 16,000 homes. GE recently constructed a prototype Heliod in the Netherlands. This is a time lapse video of the construction. And the company plans to commercialize Heliod by 2021 and will supply up to 300 of the massive turbines to the Dogger Bank wind farm. Dogger Bank will be the largest offshore wind farm in the world with a massive 3.6 gigawatt capacity and will power 4.5 million homes in the UK. Constructing offshore turbines requires specialized vessels called offshore jackup installation vessels. And the installation of the Heliod X turbines will require the largest jackup vessel in the world, the Voltaire, constructed by the Jandanol Group. The Voltaire is a behemoth at almost 170 meters long, and the Voltaire's lifting capacity of 3,000 tons is twice the capacity of Jandanol's next largest vessel. Anyway, the UK is gearing up to be carbon neutral by 2050, and with the help of these incredible offshore wind farms, it's well on its way. Matter of fact, Scotland generated twice the power it needs from wind power in the first half of 2019. It's kind of cool that the country where the Industrial Revolution began with steam power is now leading the adoption of offshore wind power. And offshore wind power is going to expand well beyond the UK in the coming years. As mentioned earlier, Germany is not too far behind the UK. Germany has almost 1,500 offshore wind turbines with a capacity of 7.5 gigawatts, and it's expected to grow to 15 gigawatts by 2030. The Global Wind Energy Council projects the global offshore wind market to grow from 20 gigawatts today to 190 gigawatts by 2030. And the total investment of offshore wind farms could reach $1 trillion by 2040. So the wind offers a vast amount of renewable energy that is readily available, no mining, drilling, or fusing of atomic nuclei required. All right, that's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.